Hey guys, this is Gaming here today, back with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today, we're going to be getting on with part 2 of our custom health bars tutorial from last time. Like I said last time, today we're going to be creating the custom health GUIs that'll go over other players' heads, as well as your own, if you'd like, depending on how you configure it. So let's go ahead and hop on in. Today we're going to be starting differently than normal. Instead of just jumping into the tutorial, I actually wanted to show you what the end result will be like before I show you how to get to that end result. That way you can know if you've clicked on the wrong video. So as you can see here, I've started up a local server with two different players. I'm going to make one of them take damage by walking into this little block right here. And you'll be able to see that when I do this, you can see that the player 1 takes damage on both players' screens, and that the health bar only shows up after the player takes the damage, just like the default Roblox health bar. You can change this later on if you like, so that it will always stay overhead. I will show you how to do that when we get into the script. You'll also notice that player 1 here can currently see his own health bar, unlike Roblox's default health bar. I'll show you how we can change that as well. So if you'd like, you can hide the health bar over your own player's head and only have it appear over other players' heads. And then lastly, I'll show you how you can have every player have a randomly selected color for their name label. Now we can get into making the GUI. The good thing is that you pretty much reuse the health bar that you made in the last tutorial. You'll just have to change the size and the position of the parent frame to suit your liking, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The first thing you will need to do is go ahead and put a script into starter character scripts. This is just a normal script, not a local script. And you can find starter character scripts under starter player here. These are scripts that will be copied into every character model when they join the game or when they respawn. So inside of that script, we're going to insert a billboard GUI. You can see here that I've named mine display. It really doesn't matter what you decide to call yours. You can even leave it billboard GUI if you'd like. So inside of your billboard GUI is where you can paste in your health bar. A few changes you'll need to make to the health bar from last time, however. First, you'll want to replace the local script in it with a normal script. Just copy everything from the local script and paste it into the new script. We'll need to change a couple lines in there, but I'll show you that later. So go ahead and disable this script down in the properties. Next, you might also want to delete the text label that displays how much health the player has. You can leave it if you'd like, but for this tutorial and the provided scripts, I have deleted my own. So if you want to keep it, you'll have to add it back in on your own. Before we get into any of the scripting, however, I recommend that you configure your billboard GUI and rescale it and reposition the parent frame of your health bar. The best way to do this is to insert a random part and put your billboard GUI inside of it. There are a few properties you're going to want to make sure that you have set, however. On the billboard GUI, make sure that you have reset on spawn checked. You're also going to want to change the size property. Like always, make sure you use the scale part of the property, especially with billboard GUIs. If you don't do this, your GUI will look absolutely terrible and will basically be unusable. Go ahead and try to use offset if you want and you can see what I mean. Next, you can go ahead and change the studs offset property. I recommend changing the Y value here. By changing this, you can set how high above the player's heads the GUI will appear. I have found that 2.5 works best for me, but yours will be different depending on how you size and position your child GUIs. So those are pretty much the properties that you need to change. Everything else is completely up to you and your taste when it comes to how you want your health bar positioned and colored and everything. If you are following along with this tutorial, however, you will want to insert another text label that will be showing the player's name. So if you'd like to follow along, make sure you go ahead and include that in the billboard GUI next to the parent frame is what I'm going to be calling this frame here. 
Once you've got all that sorted out, go ahead and dump the billboard GUI back into your script and character scripts. We still have a few more things to add into the script, however. Go ahead and insert a folder called Colors. And yes, I spell color the right way, so if you choose to change it, just know that you'll have to modify the script itself. Inside of the color folder though, go ahead and we are going to include a bunch of color 3 values. You can just insert these from the insert menu. These will be the colors that will be randomly selected for every player's name label. So just go ahead and insert as many as you like. It doesn't matter how many you have or what you name them either. I just have mine as numbers so that it looks nicer than having just value, value, value over and over. And once you're done with that, we can actually get into the script. To be honest with you guys, I'm not very proud with the organization of this script, but as there are no functions or not much logic, the instructions are pretty much just laid out in sequential order. The first instruction that is executed is actually going to change the seed for the random number generator that we're going to be using to give the player random colors for their names. It's not too important what this line does specifically behind the scenes or even that you include it. It basically just makes the randomness in our game even more random. Next, I get all the colors that we created and randomly select one to give to the player. There are other ways to do this of course, for example changing the player's name color based on their team, but we'll save that for another tutorial if that's something you need. After that, we just create a few more variables that we're going to need, like storing the character, the player, and a reference to the billboard GUI, so we don't have to keep typing script.parent.display every time. The last variable we have is one that you can change depending on whether or not you want the player to see their own health bar. If you want them to see it, leave it as true. If you don't, you can change it to false. In fact, when I post the script, I think I'll move it to the top so that it's easier for you guys to locate and change. After the variables are all set up, we then put the billboard GUI inside of the player's head because that's the part we want the health bar floating over. Next is the logic that changes the player to hide from property of the billboard GUI depending on if you want the player to see their own health bar. In case you're wondering, you can hide the billboard GUI from multiple players. So say if you had a team match and you didn't want the enemy team to be able to see the names and health bars, you could just add the whole enemy team to the list of players to hide from. But again, that's a tutorial for another day. After that, we just finish setting up the rest of the GUI. So first we enable the script inside the health bar, and then we change the text of the text label so that it is our player's name. Then we just simply change the color to the random one that we picked earlier. And then lastly, we change the display distance type on our player's humanoid, which means that we're hiding the default health GUI that is provided by Roblox so that we won't see that one and we'll only see the one that we just made. Now that that's all set up, we've hopped on over to the other script, the one inside the health bar, so that I can show you the changes I've made here. Mostly it's the same, but there are a few things that I had to change. Specifically, the first thing I've changed here is the first line. Since there's no longer a local script running on the client, we can't get a reference to the player by using local player. So I have to get the player another way. And this is the best way I could think of to do it, but there are certainly other ways. This is just the way I've wanted to and am used to using. <laughs> And then next I have uh, another customization variable that you guys can change. So this is the one that will determine whether or not we hide the health bar if the player is at full health. If you want it hidden, go ahead and leave this to true, otherwise change it to false. After that, the rest of our script is pretty much the same as last time, so I won't go into too much detail here about how it works. If you'd like to see the full explanation for this script, you can watch part one of this video, and I'll leave a link to that that you can get to by clicking the eye icon in the upper right corner of the video. In this video, I will be going over the changes I made, of course, to the script. 
So here you can see I've added a new condition for when our health bar is full. We determine that by checking to see if health is the same as max HP. When that's true, the bar is full, and so here's where we hide the health bar if we have selected to go with that option. And we do this by simply changing the visibility of the GUI. Here we also set the size of the GUI to be 100%, since now the bar will only change when the value is below 100%. And then the only other changes are in the other two conditions where we set the health bar back to visible. If you aren't hiding the health bar in the first place though, these lines won't actually do anything, so we don't have to worry about like any if statements or removing them. You can just leave them in. It doesn't matter if they're there. Like I said, they won't do anything. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up for everything you need for this tutorial. Before you go, however, there are a few things I need to point out. While I was playing around with this script, I did notice that for whatever reason, if you playtest this inside studio, it won't actually work. As you can see here when I try to damage my player. I honestly have no idea why, I just wanted to make you aware so that if you try testing this in studio and it wasn't working, you don't have to worry quite yet. Really the best ways to test this are to either upload your place to Roblox, because I have done that and it works there, or start a local server by going to test up here on the ribbon, selecting how many client players you want and then hitting the start button. Another thing I wanted to point out that you may notice while testing is that if you load up more than one player for your local server tests, their health bars will usually be the same color. I believe this has to do with the fact that the players are pretty much joining the game at the same time, so you shouldn't see this behavior in a real world scenario where players join the game at different times. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. If you have any questions or if there's any points that you need clarified, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or in my Discord server that you can find a link to down in the description. Also, if you have any suggestions for tutorials, please be sure to leave those down in the comments as well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.